The SEC is known for producing star quarterbacks, a lot of NFL talent, and getting high recruits. Well, Texas a and is just another one of those schools, as they've had guys like Johnny Manziel, Kenny Hill, Kyle Allen, and Kyler Murray at one point on their roster this decade, and the latest guy in that line is Kellen Mond. Unfortunately, a lot of quarterbacks in the SEC don't seemingly do that well in the NFL for some reason, and no one really knows why. Kellen Mond has seemingly been at Texas A&M forever now, and he was a big-time recruit coming out of high school and had a lot of high expectations under his name, and he had a pretty solid run in his career. But right now, he's kind of trendy as a quarterback as a late-round steal, and some people actually think he can become a starter in the NFL one day. Today, we're going to talk about Kellen Mond, his time in college, and what his NFL future looks like, and if he could be a late-round steal at the quarterback position. But before we get into that, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, as if you're new here, you're going to love my college football content, and you won't want to miss out. Give the video a like if you want to support the video and what I'm doing here on YouTube. Suggest what player, topic, coach, or video I can do next. And turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond was born on June 22, 1999 in San Antonio, Texas. He began his prep football career at Reagan High School in San Antonio and obviously was good at football from a young age. This is the same place that Trevor Knight went, and in case you don't remember him, he was a quarterback at Oklahoma and Texas A&M for a little while, so Kellen had big shoes to fill. He would deliver big time, winning back-to-back -back district titles as a sophomore and a junior, but in order to increase his recruiting exposure and further refine his game, he decided to make a transfer that would change his career. His family made the decision for him to transfer to IMG Academy in Florida for his senior season. He came in and battled with future Minnesota quarterback Zach Anikstead for the starting job, this would be an extremely difficult decision for his family, but he was confident in his abilities, and it's safe to say his decision would pay off as he would beat out Anikstead for the starting job. Upon completion of his senior year, he was rated a 5-star recruit by Rivals.com and was ranked as the best dual threat quarterback in the country. 24-7 Sports was also quite impressed as he was given a 4-star evaluation, which ranked him as the third overall dual threat quarterback in the country. Mom was highly coveted across the country and had offers to back it up. Blue Blood schools such as Clemson, Georgia, LSU, and Ohio State were extremely interested in his services and all gave him an offer. Given his options, Mon had quite the decision ahead of him, and on June 24, 2015, Mon decided to stay fairly close to home and commit to Art Bryles in the Baylor Bears. The Bears were coming off an 11-2 campaign and had just completed their first full season in their brand new state-of-the-yard McLean Stadium, and guys like Robert Griffin III, Bryce Petty, and Seth Russell were, had come before him. They shared that Big 12 title at TCU, and both squads narrowly missed the college football playoff, finishing at 5-6, and, and TCU definitely got robbed. This narrow miss for both teams contributed to the Big 12 adding a championship game, and this was definitely a crisis moment for the conference. Ironically enough, though, the conference slogan at the time was one true champion, and both got left out. After this successful season, the atmosphere around Baylor was buzzing with excitement, and it looked like things were trending upward in Waco. Help kept the momentum going, and the Bears rolled to a 10-3 season in 2015, which was good for fourth in the Big 12. The Baylor football program had seemed to turn things around, and their fan base had realistic national championship aspirations. However, unbeknownst to the fans, this was the peak of Baylor football. During the spring of 2015, it came to light that Baylor had grossly mishandled sexual assault allegations against players, and Art Bryles and his staff were complacent in the process. On May 26, Bryles was terminated by Baylor, and a mass exodus of decommitments began. Kellen Mond jumped off the sinking ship while he was ahead, and decommitted from the Bears. He said, quote, When I committed last summer, the primary basis was due to having the leadership of Art Bryles and Kendall Bryles as the Great Football Foundation. Kellen had taken a keen interest to the Bryles system at Baylor, and with the two of them no longer there, Kellen was off to greener pastures. With his recruitment wide open, Mond would have a significant decision looming ahead. Roughly a month later, on June 27th, he committed to A&M over the likes of Auburn and Ohio State. This was a huge get for the Aggies, and they beat out two bloods for Mond's services, and it was a good indicator of the program's trajectory. Mond began his Aggie career as the backup to current San Jose State quarterback Nick Starkle, but he would definitely have a chance to play. After Starkle was injured during their season opener at UCLA, Mond was thrusted into action. The Aggies held a narrow lead of 44-10 with 4 minutes to go in the third quarter, yet they somehow managed to lose the game 44-45, cue Josh Rosen. This was a textbook Kevin Sumlin performance, and the writing was on the wall for the embattled coach. Kellen led the Aggies to a 7-6 campaign, and while it wasn't the most optimal result, Mond showed flashes of the player he would eventually become. Sumlin was fired after the disappointing season, and the Aggies brought up the Brinks truck to hire Jimbo Fisher away from Florida State. 
He was known as a quarterback guru, and Aggie fans were chomping at the bit to see what he could accomplish with Mon's talent. Fisher named Mon the starter for the 2018 season, and with a week two showdown against Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson Tigers looming, he was expected to have a big performance. The Aggies gave the talented squad all they could handle, and they ended up losing a thriller 26 to 28, and there was that grim as a whole. This game showed to recruits that AM was legitimate and here to compete with the other big time programs. I remember watching that game and it was a lot of fun. I know I had friends there as well. The Aggies continued to improve throughout the 2018 season, and Mon led them to a 9 and 4 record, including a 52 to 13 drubbing of NC State in the Gator Bowl. Expectations were high for the 2019 season, as Aggies fans were expected to see the continued growth of the program under Coach Fisher. The Aggies had the hardest schedule in all of college football, and actually played the number one team three times in the same season, which included Clemson, Bama, and LSU. a and also played Georgia and Auburn, bringing them to a total of five games in the top ten on their schedule. The Aggies managed to win all of the games they should, and were competitive with Auburn and Georgia, and they finished with an 8-5 and five record, and they went over Oklahoma State in the Texas Bowl. Fans were unsure how to interpret this season, though, as many seemed to blame the losses on Kellen. Personally, I thought that Mon was better those years, but the quality of opponents ended up making him look a lot worse. Mond heard all the talk, and he knew he had some serious work cut out for him for the 2020 season to get the Aggies back on track. The 2020 season was thrown off track for obvious reasons, yet thankfully the SEC had the vision to make the season happen. The teams would play a 10-game SEC exclusive schedule, and A&M would have a tough one. The Aggies were scheduled against Alabama and Florida in weeks 2 and 3, and it seemed they'd be in for a repeat of 2019. The first two weeks of 2020 indicated no different, as the Aggies barely survived an awful Vanderbilt team in week 1, and were handled by Bama in week 2. However, in week 3, everything changed. Kyle Trask and the number 4 Gators came to town, and the Aggies were more than ready this time. AM was victorious by a 41-38 nail by, by way of a game-winning field goal, and the national media took notice. The Aggies kept the ball rolling throughout the 2020 season, and with Mon's quarterback play a huge part of their success, they had the chance to go to a college football playoff. He was extremely efficient, as he threw 19 touchdowns, only 3 picks on the season. AM continued to roll through SEC opponents, and even with the loss of their top two receivers opting out in an ACL injury, Mon continued to drop dimes and help the Aggies to a 9-1 record. Sadly, the college football playoff committee decided to let Notre Dame in, and the Aggies would have to settle for the Orange Bowl. They ended up beating a very depleted North Carolina Mac Brown team 41-27, and it shows that the Aggies are ready for a big step in 2021. Notre Dame was throttled by Alabama, and after the loss, some wondered if AM would have put up a better fight. So yeah, he'll be headed to the NFL, so what do the scouts think? After four solid years leading the Aggies, it came as little surprise that Kellen Mon would enter his name into the 2021 NFL Draft. Mon found himself slotted in the middle of a loaded quarterback class, which features generational talents such as Trevor Lawrence of Clemson, Mac Jones of Alabama, Justin Fields of Ohio State, Zach Wilson of BYU, and Trey Lance of North Dakota State. While many Aggie fans are skeptical of Mon's draft readiness, he had 19 touchdowns and only 3 picks against an SEC schedule, which I'd say is pretty good. When you consider the quality of the defenses, that's a pretty impressive statistic, and NFL scouts have taken notice. In fact, head coach Jimbo Fisher told ESPN that 10 to 15 teams had reached out to him to talk about Kellen Mond. These NFL teams see Mond as a more than capable game manager and kind of compare him to the likes of Dak Prescott. Teams are very fond of Mon's ability to take care of the football, and he has natural athleticism to extend plays and just make magic happen. Kellen has always been a capable runner for the Aggies and tends to make very good decisions pertaining to tuck the ball and take off. He doesn't have game-breaking speed, but he's more than quick enough to gain large chunks of yards pretty quickly. Scouts do knock his deep ball accuracy, but there's a very small sample size as AM does not throw the ball deep very often. Deep ball accuracy can also be significantly improved under the watchful eye of NFL coaching. I think Kellen is one of the more intriguing prospects at the quarterback position in the draft so far. I don't think it's unreasonable to see him taken as a third or fourth round pick, and maybe a guy who will actually get a chance to be a backup, and who knows, maybe he'll start one day. Kellen was a big time name in high school, and had a pretty up and down career at Texas A&M, but he's definitely one of the more memorable SEC quarterbacks of the last few years, and he could be a trendy pick for this year's draft. What do you guys think though? If you're an AM fan, let me know what you think of Mon's abilities and how you think he'll go to the NFL. And if you're a fan of college football in general, just let me know your thoughts on Mon and another player I could take a look at before the NFL draft. Before you go, be sure to hit that like button if you want this video to do better and my channel to succeed. Subscribe if you have not already and check out all my other videos, including my video just like this about Davis Mills. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.